What's going on everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. Game 4 of the Stanley Cup Finals was tonight, and the St. Louis Blues, they defeat the Boston Bruins by a score of 4-2 in Game five, Game 4 of the Stanley Cup Finals, forcing a 2-2 series tie going into Game 5 in Boston on Thursday night. And this game, it just looked like the Blues were, they controlled pace throughout the majority of this game. It looked like they gained them that momentum from the crowd, the energy from the crowd that they lacked in Game 3 on Saturday night which probably was one of the factors that they lost so badly is because they just didn't come into the game prepared. They didn't look like they had any momentum whatsoever. But in this game, they were feeding off the crowd early on before the game even started. Brett Hull, a really famous St. Louis Blue and a Hall of Famer, he comes in here, just tries to pump up the crowd right after the national anthem, and you can already tell the crowd's electric right after that. Everyone's going crazy. And it just shows really early on in this game, Ryan O'Reilly... And just to put it off, Ryan O'Reilly and Alex Petrangelo, they were the offensive juggernauts of this game. They really stepped up to help this the St. Louis Blues win this game. Ryan O'Reilly with two goals and Alex Petrangelo with two assists. And it showed early on with the first goal of the game coming 43 seconds into this. It was Ryan O'Reilly. He takes the puck behind the net and wraps it around Tuka Rask, barely gets past his skate, and it makes it a one nothing lead for the St. Louis Blues. And you could tell the Blues are feeding off right off that goal. The crowd's electric. They're going crazy. And you could tell the Blues are gaining some momentum that they lacked from Game 3. But a little over halfway into this period, Zidane Char, he's bringing the puck up the left boards. He gets near the red line. He throws the puck towards the middle of the net. Where Charlie Coyle is, he takes the puck and puts it, buries it past Jordan Binghamton to tie the game at one. But it doesn't feel like there is a major shift in momentum. It still felt like throughout that first period, St. Louis had control of this game. It didn't look like they sat back after that goal was scored. It looked like they tried to step up instead of lay back and let Boston take that momentum. As it shows, going into the end of the period, uh, Alex Petrangelo from the point he blasts it off of Tuka Rask. The rebound goes out to Vladimir Tarasenko Stick, who buries it past Rask to make it a 2-1 lead going into the intermission. And like I said before, it just felt like St. Louis had momentum. They had some type of control over this game, and they looked a lot better compared to Game 3 on Saturday night. And the second period, just really the same thing. And surprisingly... The first penalty of this game wasn't called until the second period. There was no penalties throughout the first period, so the rest were kind of letting them play because I think in total there were only five penalties called between the both teams. So that's sort of a start of the refs starting to let them play because you could really tell both teams are hard-hitting and you could really just tell both teams do not like each other. Really, after every whistle, there's like some scrums happening. Uh, every time the goalie freezes the puck, there's some some type of scrum going on because you can just really tell these teams do not like each other one bit. And so the Blues, I think it was on their first or their second power play, uh, the Boston Bruins, they get the puck in their own zone. They try to make a rush going up the ice. Brad Marchand passes it to Patrice Bergeron, who takes the shot. It goes off of the left pad of Jordan Binghamton and lands on the stick of Brandon Carlo. He gets his first goal of the playoffs as he buries it past Jordan Binghamton, it actually goes off of Binghamton's glove. He was like this, it was like this close to going into his glove. It went off to the tip of his glove and it bounced into the net. So Boston from there ties the game at two. But just like I said, there really wasn't a momentum shift. It looked like these teams throughout the rest of the second period were getting their chances on both sides. But it just still felt like the St. Louis Blues had the upper hand. And like I said, St. Louis Blues, second period, they were getting their chances, same with Boston, but there was this one shift in the second period where St. Louis was just, I think, in Boston's zone for at least two minutes, They, were, but surprisingly, they did not score off of that, I think they got a power play off of that, but that was the power play that led to the shorthanded goal for the Boston Bruins, but there was just that one incredible shift that St. Louis had, they were just keeping the puck in, they were forcing Boston, th that line, to stay out there for at least a minute and a half. So it just really shows, like, how much in control of this game St. Louis was. And in the third period, it was the same difference. St. Louis and Boston, they were getting their chances back and forth. But then, just a really over, little over 10 minutes into this period, 
Brian O'Reilly and Alex Petrangelo. Alex Petrangelo comes in on the right side. He slaps the puck off of the right pad of Tukarask and it lands on the stick of Ryan O'Reilly, who buries it past Tukarask to give the Blues a 3-2 lead. And just throughout the rest of this game, St. Louis was taking control after this goal because after the game ended, the broadcast mentioned that after this goal was scored, Boston only had one shot on net. They did not generate any kind of chances whatsoever after Ryan O'Reilly scored the game-winning goal. And then... Going toward, the, going towards the end of the period, uh, Boston tries to get the extra man on the ice to pull Tukaras, so they get the sixth man on the ice to probably generate some offense, but it doesn't work as Braden Shen buries in the uh, the cleanup goal for the St. Louis Blues to make it 4-2. to two. And it ends from there. St. Louis wins this game 4-2. to two. And like I've said throughout this entire video, that St. Louis had the upper hand this entire game. It just didn't feel like when Boston was coming at them, it didn't feel like there was going to be any kind of momentum shift. It just felt like St. Louis didn't back down. They didn't back down when Boston scored goals. They stepped up, and they carried that momentum throughout the entire game, which is one of the reasons that St. Louis won this game, because players stepped up, they didn't back down, and they played their game with physicality without drawing many penalties. I think Boston, in total, only had two power plays, and they didn't score on either of them, so... That's a good start because Craig Bruby coming into this game, he stated that St. Louis was taking way too many penalties because they had, I think, at least 14 in total in the first three games. So this is a good start for the St. Louis Blues being disciplined, but also playing to that physical style that they are known for from this entire playoffs. So you can play physical, but you can also remain disciplined, and that's what St. Louis did in this game. That's how St. Louis is going possibly going to win this series they have to remain physical but also disciplined at the same time because we all know Boston's special teams they are nothing to mess with because they have been nothing but dominant throughout this entire the entire playoffs so the really the only way St. Louis is going to win this series and win the Stanley Cup is winning the games at five on five because they're it just when St. Louis gets power plays they get chances but it just doesn't look like they can Put the find the way to put the puck in the net because Boston's penalty kill is just super dominant, and the same thing with Boston's power play is just incredibly dominant. And sometimes it just looks like St. Louis doesn't have the answer to kill enough penalties, but they got their chances today. They only allowed two penalties and they killed both of them off, which is a start, which is something you can build off of going into Game Five. Which is no tough task because you're going into Boston. You're going into TD Garden, which is a tough place to play. And we all know that St. Louis has been a way better road team than they are at home in these playoffs. So maybe there's some comf they have some way to be comfortable when going on the road, knowing that even though the pressure is on them, they know that they have more success when they play away from St. Louis. So... We don't know if that momentum will carry on over to Boston for St. Louis, but really don't know because, as we all know, the playoffs are unpredictable. But maybe St. Louis can take this momentum and ride it into Game 5 and possibly win it there to, for to possibly have a game clincher at home for Game 6 to win the Cup. But not going to go too far into the future because Game 5 is not until Thursday. It's, two, it's uh, three days away now. So there's... Many There's much time left for Game 5. We all know Boston can probably go into Game 5 and probably dominate because each game just looked like there was a different team. It, it just Each game was each team taking over. Game 1 was Boston. Game 2 was St. Louis. Game 3, Boston. Game 4, St. Louis. So it's really often on every other game, every other team steps up and just takes control of the entire game, if you know what I mean. So what are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on St. Louis, the way they play today? What are your thoughts on players like Ryan O'Reilly and Alex Petrangelo stepping up big time in this game? So don't forget to drop a comment, and don't forget to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the video, and I'll see you in the next one.